All right, let's take a look at this figure and let's take a look at illustration eight. And when you get to illustration eight, you're going to recognize this. That's a VOR indicator. I thought you'd recognize it. They're going to say, take a look at this VOR indicator. And it indicates that uh, you have two one zero degrees set in the OBS. You've got two and a centered needle. Now, all right, super pilot, they're going to ask you, what radial are you on? Well, radial means where you are from the station. Now, if you know the course to a VOR and you want to know what radial on, you're on, what would you do? Well, you add or subtract 180 degrees. So if you have 210 degrees to what radial you're on, you're on the 0, 3, 0 degree radial. Now, what you don't know is the actual heading of the aircraft. You could be flying along the radial or you could be crossing it. And the correct answer on the test says that you're crossing the 0, 3, 0 degree radial. You've got it. Now, here is very, something very clever that you can do with your VOR. Even if you only have one VOR receiver in your airplane, you can always determine your exact position by tuning into two different VORs, determining your position from each. And of course, the intersection of two lines makes a what? Makes a point. So we can find out exactly where we are. So if you know where you are in regard to the Norfolk Vortac and you know where you are in regard to the Elizabeth City VOR DME, then you know where you are almost exactly. So. They're going to ask you a question about this, and let's take a look at it. They're going to say, first of all, you found the Norfolk uh, Vortac here, and you're on the 233-degree radial. Now, that's actually the uh, Victor 1, but it's a 233-degree radial. They say you're on Victor 1. And they're also saying you're on the 340-degree radial down here of the Elizabeth City VOR. So we can take a look at the Elizabeth City VOR. Uh, there's a little dot where the VOR DME is. Actually, it's a VOR DME. So you draw from that dot all the way up through the, the compass rows here going out to 340 radial and hit the other line. Now, you know that the intersection of two lines makes a what? They make a point. And so you're right exactly here. And they're going to ask you, how many miles are you away from the Norfolk Vortac? Now, in real life, you just use your plotter to measure the distance, and we'll cover that later on in the course. But down the test, that may not work. That's because the sectional chart excerpts in the FA Supplement Testing Book are not always the scale. So what is a test taker to do? Well, the FAA has conveniently provided a mileage scale somewhere on each sectional chart that they give you. And that mileage scale is what you have to use if you want to get the correct answer for your FAA test. So here is how you use that mileage scale. First of all, take a piece of paper, uh, the scratch paper that they give you, and put one corner on the point you want to measure from, which in this case is the Norfolk Vortex, and then run that edge of that paper along your course and then make a mark where the, these two lines intersect each other. Now, move your paper now to the mileage scale for nautical miles. Uh, and by the way, all the work on the FA test will be using knots for speed and nautical miles for distance. And put the corner on the zero point. And by the way, the, notice the zero point is not at the edge. It's in from the edge just a little bit. And then put your pencil mark along the scale, and notice you can read exactly where you are. And I get just a little bit, the distance here was just a, somewhere around 19 miles. But if you want to get the exact distance, slide your paper to the left until the tick mark is now on the 10 nautical mile point. And so between 0 and 10 is 10 nautical miles. And then we can count the miles this way to the left, from the 0 point to the left. And I get maybe 9, 9 and a quarter miles to the left. So I actually get about 19 and a quarter miles total, total. And on the test, the correct answer is 18 miles. So where are we on the test? Well, you're 18 or 19 miles southwest of the Norfolk Vortex. All right, let's illustrate that again. So let's you and I take a look at this chart. And what they tell you is you've tuned into the Savannah Vortex. So let's see if we can't find the Savannah Vortex. Ha, the red arrow makes it a lot easier. And the Vortex is on the airport. And here's our old friend, the dot. And the compass rose for it is going around out here like so. And the question says you find you're on the 320 degree radial of the Savannah Vortex. So we'll draw a line from the center of the vortex going out through the 320 degree, three, degree radial out across the chart here. 
And then they say you tune in the Allendale VOR. So that's up here. We found it. And they say you're on the 191 degree radial of the Allendale VOR. So you draw that line. And, and where these two lines intersect makes a what? It makes a point. So here in this case, they ask you where you are. And if you look at that point, you're over this private airport called Briggs. And the answer is you're over Briggs private airfield. Okay, let's take a look at another one. This time, let's take a look at the good old Sulphur Springs VOR DME. And the question goes like this. It says you've tuned in uh, your VOR receiver to the Sulphur Springs VOR DME, and it indicates you're on the 245 degree radial of the Sulphur Springs VOR DME. It's actually a VOR in this case because we're just going to use the VOR. So let's draw a line from the center of the facility going out through the compass rows here, uh, the 245 degree radial all the way out in that direction like so. And the next it says you're uh, on the 145 degree radial of the bottom vortex. So here's the bottom vortex and let's see here's the 145 degree radial like so until those two lines intersect. And the question is what's your approximate position? Well your approximate position is this airport right here and you're near Glenmar Airport. And so we've got it figured out.